as we go. All right. Uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, this session is about Cyprus. If you can't tell, I'm wearing a, a Cyprus uh, shirt there. Um, and a little bit <coughs> about me. I'm Alex Finnern. I kind of like to call myself a whatever in pragmatist because I work on whatever end of the stack. Uh, and I just like saying that more than full stack. And then I try to be very uh, pragmatic, um, so I like to keep it keep it simple. And Cyprus is a, a pretty simple solution to use, which I'll go into. Uh, that's my Twitter handle if you want to follow me on uh, Twitter. And then I currently work at Civic Actions, and uh, we do work with uh, government clients, a lot of Drupal stuff, um, kind of getting into more uh, front-end React stuff as well. And then uh, contribution day, so they talked about this in the opening, but it's uh, Friday, 10 to 4, all are welcome. Uh, yes, good thing to go to. Okay, and so now, uh, when I was deciding on how to arrange this talk, uh, I thought I would do it in the most brilliant way, or you might see laziest way possible, but I'll go with brilliant. Uh, and I just broke it into four different sections, so we'll actually go through uh, building up suspense and excitement uh, before we get to the last part, Cyprus. And so I start out with a quote slide. I like quote slides uh, to introduce things. And so I was going to come up with my own definition of test, but I thought that was a little pretentious, so I <laughs> lifted one off of the internet. Um, this is a site called WordNick. I never heard of it before. I kind of like the definition I found there, uh, determining presence, quality, or truth of something. And then I also thought it was fun at the end, they said a trial, because sometimes test writing can be boring, so you can pretend like you're interrogating your test and say things like, your honor, this form input data, is that order? I do declare. Okay, that was a joke. Uh, I'll probably not pepper in uh, more tough crowd <laughs> today. <laughs> I promise you sometimes I get laughs with that. Um, and so, before I get too far into it, I have to show the contractually obligated slide. Anytime you talk about testing, uh, the testing pyramid comes up. And so this was originally from a book called Seceding with Agile from a guy named Mike Cohen. Uh, but I lifted this uh, particular one from Martin Fowler, um, very smart guy. Uh, where he wrote an article talk called the practical test pyramid, which I would encourage you all to read, and uh, basically the way the testing pyramid works, uh, there's, you know, people sometimes have many more levels, but uh, they usually break it down in unit tests, uh, uh, UI tests, or I call it end-to-end -end tests, and then service tests, or a bunch of other things in the middle people like to argue about. The main idea is that uh, unit tests are way more isolated, and they run faster, and then what we'll be talking about, end-to-end uh, -end tests, uh, you're testing the full app, uh, they're slower, they're usually brittle, uh, but Cypress has some nice features to uh, make them less brittle and run them faster in parallel and things like that. And so, like I said, uh, our example for end end testing is Cypress. Uh, unit testing, you can use PHP unit, but PHP unit will do all kinds of testing. And then in the middle, there be dragons. Uh, <laughs> so I'm not going to go into like all the spy stuff, mocks, all that stuff. Uh, I just kind of keep it simple. Um, but people argue for, for days on that type of stuff. And then here's a, another version of the testing pyramid. I got this from uh, this course here, which was actually a, this kind of a departure into software quality assurance um, and it's an interesting course you can take it's like Netflix uh, style subscription uh, but they added another level and I thought it was interesting that they kind of split it out to like who the tests are for um, and ideally you don't want to like you know uh, silo the test but you're probably not going to show unit tests to your uh, you know, clients uh, but the dream is that they're involved in, in acceptance testing uh, uh, kind of like we're going to get into a little bit later. And then here's another uh, chart from the same course. Uh, and uh, oftentimes you can see uh, test bases kind of uh, upside down. Um, and when you think about, um, and the money is there, it'll cost you uh, because it'll be hard to maintain. Uh, and when you think about, you know, Drupal, a lot of times you're um, testing, you're using a lot of contributed code, 
so you're maybe not at the unit level so sometimes this is how my test suites looked and I thought oh yeah this is great and then yeah and, and Kool-Aid man and so clearly I'm joking here but you can kind of have a cavalier attitude I did before about you know why would you you know need more unit tests than acceptance but I think you can push them down um, levels uh, which I'll talk about a little bit later and then the last slide and test um, this is kind of how I got introduced to end-to-end um, -end testing, behavior-driven development. Uh, I took over a test suite, it uh, was written in Gherkin, and so you have this concept of give and win then, and you also see a range, act, and assert. So you want to set up the test uh, with some kind of condition, logging in, then you do actions, usually more than probably one, and then uh, assertions, which could be one or many. And so now I'll get into uh, Drupal, which is why we're, we're all here, and you know things that you have on your Drupal site. But for a quote slide, I thought I'd just take a trip down uh, memory lane, and that's kind of the first quote I remember from Drupal. Come for the code, stay for the community. Although on when I was looking back on the Drupal.org site, it, it showed up as come for the software, stay for the community. And then now I see that's on the Olivero theme again so it's it's a very uh, nice slogan and then I just decided for whatever reason to put on like maybe who that uh, slogan is for so I think that's kind of you know for PHP developers you know getting in to Drupal maybe uh, mid 2000s late everyone was kind of building their own uh, system and uh, Drupal was just have a nice community for that that's kind of when I got into Drupal and then as far as marketing stuff, uh, this was uh, about 10 years ago I found uh, Dries' presentation at Drupal Down Under where you started you know, marketing Drupal more and this he's saying that it's mid-market, wasn't enterprise yet and that's kind of contrasting it with WordPress, a small market uh, and then we get a little more uh, you know, uh, commercial here and uh, five years later DrupalCon Baltimore, Drupal is for ambitious digital experiences Kind of reminds me of like the uh, uh, Zoolander, like Blue Steel, ambitious digital experiences. And that was a course for c -Low executives like Sitecore and whatnot. And then now I'm glad that the, the slogan is back to kind of the roots for ambitious site builders. And I kind of see Drupal's competition more. It's like Webflow, um, Bubble, things like that. And getting more into the project browser, I think you'll see uh, you know, more along the lines of that. That's my quote slide. And then what does your Drupal site have? Well, it has users, and so I'll go into a custom command for this, but you know that's one of the first things you uh, figure out when you're writing a lot of intent tests is how to you know, kind of uh, customize that and make it more efficient. Um, you know, you have WYSIWYGs and more. Um, so I know CKDR5 is, is not an iframe, I think, so it's a little easier to test than CKDR4. Um, and then you have things like autocomplete fields, which can kind of be tricky or, um, you know, for searches and things. Um, you have iframes, uh, so just admittedly Cypress isn't that great for iframes. Um, I've had solutions like uh, there I'm testing uh, just iframe payment solution. You might be familiar with that, use that on your sites, and that worked well, but other times, and I'll get into that later, um, iframe just really hard to do, some other solutions uh, have that done better. And then you can even test things like JSON API, you have a decoupled site or you're exposing your API, Cypress can be used for that, might not be the best tool, but if you want to squeeze in uh, a test there, or request or something like that, you can do that as well. And then a little bit about uh, the Drupal test, so this is uh, just a screenshot of Drush generate uh, command. And you can see the five uh, different types of Drupal tests going you know, upwards from unit tests uh, to kernel tests to browser uh, to web driver and Nightwatch I think are kind of on the, the same uh, level. Web driver uses Selenium and then Nightwatch is kind of its own thing. Um, and then a little bit about Drupal CI. I'm not you know, super uh, familiar with that, but I know there is a GitLab acceleration session, I think tomorrow. Um, so it is still on Drupal.org, but it's moving to GitLab CI. I'm not sure the, um, the stage of that, but you can find out more probably in that talk. Um, you can run locally what's on uh, Drupal.org via that uh, run test. 
shell script, which is actually a PHP uh, file and script. Um, and then I think Nightwatch is probably the closest uh, comparison to Cypress. Uh, like I said, uh, the web driver functional JavaScript uh, test traditionally used Selenium. And this is a nice add-on if you have to uh, do this locally. It came out like last fall, but uh, I almost made an add-on as well because it was kind of hard to run uh, the different types of tests locally, but um, Mosh, a uh, good Drupal contributor, made, made that, and it's uh, a good add-on. And then he also made uh, something called Drupal Test Traits, which you can use if you have you know, uh, content on your site and you're testing it with a database backup, which a lot of people are, what I do. Yep. And so that's a bit on uh, Drupal site, bought a lot on it. And then this uh, quote, I was just kind of searching for uh, easy way or whatever, and the universe sent me a, a Franz Kafka quote of all things. <laughs> and uh, he said at one point, in the struggle between yourself and the world, second the world, and so I'm going to tell you a, a troubled tale of where I chose the world, and in that case it was uh, Behat and uh, Selenium, and I'm going to contrast that with Cypress. Uh, so this is, like I said, I kind of got into doing more intent testing with uh, Behat, and I was using this nice uh, Drupal extension, and you know what can go wrong with that nice DrupalCon there? It's one of my favorite uh, DrupalCons. It's a nice trucker hat. And so here's uh, what I had in a uh, composer file there. You can see there's several um, dependencies there. Uh, to maintain where Cypress, I'm kind of just maintaining one. And then a little bit later, you can see I was cl cleaning it up. I got rid of the Drupal extension because um, it's useful, but I, I kind of was fighting with the step definitions and whatnot. So sort of similar if you're making a component library on the front end, maybe the more you get into it, the kind of reduce dependencies like that. Um, so it's a little better with maintaining. And then here's an example of a configuration file. And it is cut off, you know, and that's an intentional because it's sad slide. And sad <laughs> slides can have cut off text. And so just to point out, you know, there's a note there about, uh, you know, having to do something or the test will fail because of uh, uh, but some issue in that. Um, and so it's just silly that I had to have a lot of this configuration because I was connecting to Sauce Labs to run the test because just maintaining the Selenium server and browser uh, versions was tough. Uh, so I was using that. It was a lot, a lot harder to use in the Cypress test runner, in my opinion. And then here, maybe this is a, a little over-engineered, but I, I had gotten to three different, um, you know, BHAT YAML files here for different... Um, uh, situations, and I just wanted to point out, you know, the commit message has uh, something about testing the port of different proxies. I don't remember what that was, but it probably took me days uh, trying to debug something on a remote um, on Sauce Labs where you can barely see it, and you have to look at uh, weird debugging things. Uh, so I've never had a problem with ports or anything like that with Cypress. It's been, you know, very easy uh, to run the test. And so here, when I was using uh, you, have, you have your uh, step definition, and uh, so I was putting this uh, <laughs> after like all of the uh, uh, commands, and it basically you know just arbitrarily waits for two seconds or those other conditions. Uh, so Cypress has better retryability, and I know I haven't used uh, Behat uh, for a while, so it might have gotten a lot better. But that was always an annoying thing was waiting for the the dang stuff to appear on the screen. Test failing, and here's another step definitions. Uh, just when you click the element, and you know I was never good with regex, so I just was glad I could copy that and, and it worked. Um, but uh, I want to point out locality of behavior, which is a, a concept. There's an essay there, but the idea is that you're trying to keep your code, uh, you know, all located, so you don't have to go around to many different files uh, to look at everything. And so with, uh, you know, behead and the step definitions and Gherkin, you're always kind of going back because the idea is that, you know, you can translate the two and it gets messy, which I'll show in a little second. Um, but this was hard, harder to keep, you know, where the code is and if something fails, uh, you know, how to fix it. 
just going around to different locations. And here's kind of the dream of the 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 bee hat uh, scenario. It's very legible. Um, you know, given when then there's uh, variables there, you can probably know what happens as it runs through. Um, it'll go through the example and uh, use use that, and you would have more conditions there. Um, it's got a tag at the top, so you can run uh, you know various tests and groups. Uh, looks all nice, right? And then then it turns into this, and so it's another sad slide that has cut off text because sad slides can have cut off text. And uh, you know I don't know why, but there was a, a coworker that liked to write in all caps. Uh, maybe they were uh, frustrated with <laughs> with be ahead there. Um, and so what you'll get into is you'll get into like how do you select this element? And uh, I'm not going to get into page objects, but that is something you can try to use to abstract. You know, having a key for the value of each CSS selector, um, but Cypress doesn't really recommend uh, doing that. And then uh, down here, you can see um, because it's hard to overwrite the uh, step definition, you can do that object oriented, but um, the regex and whatnot, uh, you can't do that. So it'll just uh, you know error out. Uh, because you have the same type of step definition, so you end up having you know, like prefix steps, which is kind of look like stupid. Um, and you know, Cypress, you can uh, overwrite them uh, better. And so now we finally get to Cypress, so hooray. And uh, for a quote slide, I didn't have to try that hard because Cypress is pretty good at marketing itself. So this comes off of a uh, great page there where they tell you why to use Cypress and some, some things about their best practices and philosophies. And um, yeah, we're trying to address the key pain points, which I just went over. Um, retryability, you know, keeping the test runner uh, in line and different things like that. And they're trying to just make it really easy for you to get into testing. Um, they also have like training resources, which they do a really good job of. And then this is just what happens when you uh, first open Cypress. Uh, so there's a test runner you can open. And um, there you can see I'm specifying some options to the CLI command to uh, do end-to-end -end tests and to specify the browser. Um, and then the next part you'll get to is uh, if you don't specify that in the CLI command and you just open it, is uh, two different types of testing. So um, I won't get into component testing, but Cypress is, is trying to get more into that, so it'll be you know React View, things like uh, that. You would use component testing. Two notes: someone did create a Twig component testing a library, uh, so you can mount Twig uh, you know files, or you're doing something with Twig components and, and test Cypress that way. I haven't really tried it out, but there's a link for you. Uh, but what we'll be doing is end-to-end -end testing a part. And then it nicely lets you choose a browser. Um, so if you notice, there's no Safari on there. I have a, a Mac. It should show up if there is support, but they're still working on that. So that's kind of, if you need cross-browser support, that's one of the things where Selenium you know, is a bit older and has more stable support. Um, you can start uh, only yet. And that's a uh, Docker image. So if you're using CI, it's uh, good because it'll install the tools that are needed to run it uh, in a CI environment which can be kind of tricky if you're trying to set that up yourself. So I encourage you to use that if you're testing Cypress and putting it in your CI pipeline. And then here's what some code looks like. So uh, it's pretty simple and, and legible even though it is uh, JavaScript code. Uh, so you generally have uh, describe and it syntax. So describe, uh, you generally uh, group the tests, like what types of tests are they? And then it is the individual uh, test there. And it's just a function that uh, runs. So here we are using the um, different Cypress commands. They're all chained off of sci dot whatever. And you can see that uh, a lot of them are chainable. So you can have a very kind of fluid syntax. And here we're just you know logging in um, using CSS selectors. So you can see that sometimes, uh, and I'll go into like what's a good you know, best practice methodology for selecting things, but it can get tricky there. Um, and then we're visiting and then asserting something. So you can see this is kind of the range act assert uh, paradigm split out there. 
and I believe it's called MUCA syntax, I think is the describe it, um, but a lot of different testing frameworks uh, use this now. And then here's a custom command, so there's a lot, a lot on this slide I'll, I'll break down, but uh, you know, we just logged in in the previous slide, but you don't really want to do that in all your tests. Uh, you just have a lot of them if you're logging in. A lot of Drupal sites have a lot of different users. And so here what we're doing is adding a custom command. Uh, so you put this in a uh, support file and it loads this before the test run so it's available uh, when you're writing the test, like down there. So it's called login. And then you can pass in any number of parameters. Here we have two user password. And so that's making a request, which is faster than a visit because it's not going to load the whole page. Um, posting it and uh, to that form. And then also to note is the session command, uh, which I've you know, linked down below the slide. And what this will do is if you, uh, if it hasn't run, it'll look for a key, which I'm just using the user there. And if it finds it, then it will go ahead and restore that from cache. Um, and you also want to use this option probably called cache across specs because if you don't do that, when a test like file, like I said, the authentication test, it goes to another test group, it'll erase that and so it'll have to log in again. So I usually just cache it um, and it saves, I mean, it depends on your test uh, run, how many tests, but it'll save you quite a bit of time uh, to do it this way rather than logging in and out. That's a bit on uh, custom commands. It's uh, good to add a few, but you don't want to add like too many. Uh, like I said, locality behavior, if you're, Cypress has a pretty nice API, so if you're making a bunch of commands for a bunch of things and you get into the uh, kind of tricky things you get into with like don't repeat yourself and then you do it too soon and then you're adding a bunch of parameters. So um, login commands, other common things, but I don't have too many custom commands usually. And uh, here's an example of a, a test, just testing content creation. And so you can see there are, uh, you know, some of the commands we had in the previous slides. Um, here's a select file, so that'll uh, just help you upload the file, a pretty easy API. Uh, you just got to select an element and then point it to the file. Um, here we're filling out a body field, which um, you can see the, <laughs> the selectors get a little hairy. Um, it's interesting for um, the different CK editor buttons. The thing I found most semantic was the uh, tooltip text, actually. But otherwise, the you know CSS and the you know HTML attributes are a little little hairy. Um, and then another thing to notice: Cypress has a lot of great plugins. So this is uh, Cypress Real Events. You have a lot of these. Uh, like if there's a type command, uh, you have a real type command, and so Cypress will simulate. The events sometimes that can cause issues so if you're having that issue you can uh, use Cypress real events or you can just switch to it um, all the time so you don't have to you know go back if you're having a problem but it will actually uh, you know do do the uh, event in a native way uh, so it's more reliable and then this is just uh, the you know tag autocomplete field um, you can type in, and there are some uh, special uh, characters like enter tab, so that just types in foobar and enters, and then we have some tags, and that's just uh, saving the article. So here a little bit on best practice selecting elements, as you know, I saw on the last slide that it can get kind of hairy. Um, so what Cypress recommends, and I do too, is to use things like data attributes. So they like to use data sci. I would use data test ID because maybe you're not going to use Cypress at some point, but they, they of course want you to use data sci because probably, uh, you know, one, one more reason not to switch. Um, but you'll see commonly like classes and IDs. Um, if you want to refactor something, you know, and that uh, might break. So down here we have, you know, this is going to be more brittle. Let's say they, for whatever reason, decide to change that CSS. Or, Test will break, but if you tell the developers like, "Hey, when you see these data test ID attributes or data sci, you know, don't don't change these, and you can you know make them as semantic as you want." Uh, so then there's more. There's a lot more to the best practices if you follow that selecting elements link.
And then here we have assertions. Um, so this is just asserting the content creation in the last uh, slide. So you have uh, uh, commands like contains, which will just look at what you've uh, gathered here, and it will just uh, take the text from everything and look, you know, does that have it in there? So some people like to be more uh, specific with what the text is or assertions, but I, I'll use that if you know it just makes sense. It's you know pretty legible. Um, there's asserting the image. Uh, here we have uh, the CK editor output. So I just have uh, the assertion should have HTML. And so these are uh, very readable try assertions. And there's a lot of them. Uh, so you can have should not have HTML and various things like that. Um, and then here's testing the tags. Uh, and I'm using this function EQ. Um, Cypress actually will get uh, the elements and a jQuery element. So I believe it's using kind of just the jQuery EQ function, but that, um, you know, would just loop through the array and, uh, you know, I'm just making sure they're the same in order and contains the text there. Um, and then you, you can, you know, flip the assertion. So you can say side get and then should, or you can say expect uh, whatever your value is. And you can even do the assertions uh, in that method notation rather than, you know, in that string notation, but I would just, in your dev team, pick a style, you know, write it down and stick to it. Um, you don't want to have people going back and forth, but that'll happen if you don't, uh, you know, come to any agreement on, on what to do for standards. And then aliases. Uh, aliases are, are fun. Um, you know, Cypress is JavaScript. It uh, functions in an async nature. And so sometimes it can be hard uh, to get the variable and scope that you want. Uh, so one thing you can use is Cypress aliases. So this just comes from the Cypress docs. So here in Cypress has lifecycle hooks. So that's important to know. You can do before the whole test runs, before each test runs, before or after the whole suite, or after each test runs. And what this is doing here is uh, you know, getting the button text, but then since we're not using an alias there, if you're trying to use it in a test, it doesn't work because it's not in scope. Um, so this way we'll uh, get, get an element. You can use another command to just, um, you know, call any method. Um, I see some people like uh, writing it this way. You could also do it in JavaScript, uh, but it's more the syntax of Cypress. And then the as keyword or as command will create the alias. So now we have an alias called text. And uh, now you can use it down in the um, test. It's actually just uh, off of the uh, current objects of this. Um, so that'll be a property. But you can also use it in this syntax. Um, and what this will do uh, when you get it was we'll rerun the uh, command. So it's not a stale reference. Um, so that's nice. So that's a bit on aliases. And then you can use aliases and with the intercept command. And this is one of the, the coolest things about Cypress. And I know other frameworks can do it, but when I learned it, I thought, wow, this is cool beans here. And so this example, um, we have, let's just pretend like we have a you know, decoupled application or something like that. And we're getting uh, data from an API uh, one common thing you'll have uh, is, you know, is, is the stuff there when the test runs? You know, how long do I have to wait for it? That's a common source of, of errors with JavaScript not running. Uh, so what this does is it uh, spies on any request because browser, or Cypress is attached to the browser, so it runs. And so to look for any of these requests, uh, turn them into aliases, and then we can wait for them any number of aliases before we run our assertion. Uh, so that's uh, a lot better than saying, you know, so I wait five seconds or something arbitrarily like that. Um, and then you can also uh, attach a fixture. So here I'm just, you know, maybe you have, uh, you don't want to test all of the users, but you want to supply a, a test list of users. But here it lets the uh, API request go through. Uh, and just gets back, uh, you know, the individual ID or something like that. Another cool thing you can do with intercepts is if you have a production 
environment with different headers on there and your code you know reacts that way you kind of like well how, how do I do that if I'm not in production uh, well you can actually uh, capture the uh, re response uh, and before it uh, goes there and add a header so I had an example uh, where there was a certain header added I don't remember why but um, the code looked for it um, and made sure that uh, you know it was a multilingual feature and so I was able to add this and then the code could read it without having to change my application code, which is, is really nice. And then, you know, down here we have uh, the intercept command with uh, CK editor. Um, so, or, you know, layout builder. There's a lot of, you know, ajax -y things that uh, you might want to, you know, spy on that stuff so that when you're trying to assert later, um, you know, you know it's there. And then uh, for people that like to use like a click browser extension, uh, Cypress is working on stuff like that. So that's a screenshot of um, this extension uh, that runs on the Chrome, or some protocol in Chrome. And so it's using that. Uh, you can see that there's Puppeteer also mentioned there, but uh, Cypress added their hat to the ring. And so you can use that, like if you've used uh, Selenium, sometimes they have a, a browser extension where you can just click around and then it will capture that and you can put that into a test. It's kind of nice to get started. And now that we have gone through Cypress features, I just want to go into some you know, uh, opinions, opinions of mine. So this gets into the op <laughs> opinion part. Um, and so I'll just say like, uh, you know, when when you write tests, uh, now you know how to, to write them, like, but where do you put them, and all that type of thing, that can be confusing if you're a new developer onboarded. Where do you put the tests, and if you don't have that, you know, figured out, people just put them in all sorts of places, and then you have to refactor that later. Um, and so I think, you know, tests, and then tests can kind of come from two places, uh, features, and then uh, bugs. And so here's just an example of some way that you could arrange your end-to-end uh, -end testing folder. And so you could arrange it like this. So you could have at the top level uh, regressions, which of course come from bugs. So maybe you want to isolate these out at first because they're really important. Uh, you might even have like a hot fix in your dev environment, uh, but you don't know where the test uh, really goes. And I think like any regression should, should be put into uh, other tests because it's you know something a uh, user is doing so it's not really isolated to to a bug it's part of a user story probably uh, features you have you know user stories related to different roles those are you know different roles on the uh, Drupal site there and so you could uh, you know arrange your test uh, that way and make sure that you're you know trying to think of the best uh, Best way to arrange your features, however that's set out. Um, you can also use like a user guide if you have that for your, um, you know, site users and try to map that. Uh, might be an easy way to organize it. And then here's uh, what the uh, creator of Cypress he gave a talk, and that's you know was a screenshot of his uh, directory. So he said to break it up into models, you know, and you see it's not it kind of doesn't really follow it, but. Um, Anyway, uh, you can split it up into models or user roles. And then uh, you can also uh, put test in and use uh, a skip uh, method and that'll, Cypress will just skip that test like you would think. Um, so it's a good way to add, add tests. Maybe you know you could, uh, QA could stub out uh, the test uh, and the developer could figure, figure it, fill it in later. Uh, you can also, as you're writing features, you know, maybe during sprint planning, go through the steps um, and fill it in as you develop. And then, like I said, I think you want to take uh, regressions and kind of push them down into uh, features. Um, and then if you are looking at your features and trying to refactor those, maybe try to push those down into integration tests because, uh, you know, if you're repeating different things, you know, end-to-end -end testing can be expensive and integration tests would generally run, run faster. So always kind of look how you can uh, push things down. So that's a, a little methodology for you, you can think about. Um, and here's some examples of tests that I've pulled from uh, different repos I've uh, worked on. 
And uh, so this this kind of like, is this a good test or bad test? And kind of musing on it. Um, so here uh, you'll see this this is kind of like a regression test. Uh, oftentimes I'll put in specific bug, uh, maybe a link to the um, you know testing uh, or Jira or whatever you have, so it has more information uh, contextually for someone going back to see it. Um, here we're basically just looking for a preview uh, node, but is it good? I don't really think so because like this is probably part of some kind of user story somewhere, so it's okay to have the test. Like maybe this was a, a bug you had where you couldn't get the preview and you just wanted to make sure that that was working in your CI. But um, I would go back and refactor this and look for, you know, why is someone previewing a node? There's probably a reason and stick it into that test because this is a Cypress best practice. Uh, well, I'll get to that in a little bit, but not to split apart tests uh, too much. And so uh, here we have a test where it is kind of split apart. Um, you know, you can assert these things uh, in one block uh, because every time you have an if function, Cypress will blow away uh, the session cookie and all that type of stuff and reset itself so it adds extra time. And a lot of times unit tests, you're breaking them up because you want to know like where it failed, uh, but Cypress has very good reporting, so you always know where it failed takes videos and screenshots, so it's you know, less, uh, less useful to break them up uh, religiously, um, one test per uh, thing you're asserting. And then this also has a, uh, a potential bug in it. I don't know if anybody can spot it, but uh, one thing to do is to not rely on state from a previous test and the next test. So here we have, uh, I see this a lot in, in things I've worked on. Um, and so here we're, you know, asserting this and then visiting another page. So if this fails, then I won't be on the about page and let's say uh, I want to, you know, have this assertion. So this will fail and then, you know, if that's, you know, relying on being on the about page, that'll fail. Um, and so you want to, you know, set things up, uh, you know, maybe before, uh, before each hook, before the test, uh, and you just don't want to rely on state like that between tests. So here's this test sort of uh, cleaned up once again. It's not, you know, a very good test because it's just flippantly like someone had to verify CSS and stuff. Um, but this, uh, you know, I think is more readable and, uh, you know, it's testing similar things. So I just don't think you have to break it up uh, like the previous slide. And then here's some tests I wrote, so I think I think they're better better because uh, I wrote them. Um, but um, one common thing that you'll have to uh, do, um, you can think of tests like, uh, do you have a, a listing and then a detail, um, you know, with a different, like I was saying, models before. This is a content type, um, and so you might want to think of tests that way, or like uh, collections and then individual items. Um, this is a test. Uh, I had a slide there. Iframe uh, payment form. So this test, uh, as I wrote, that involves that. And it's got several things in it. Um, you know, here are some sort of variables like, you know, there's makes a, a single, so there's a way to make multiple. There's other tests like that. Um, test some form validation. So a little messy, but while you're in there, you know, uh, filling out the form, if you have some validations, I think it's fine to include it rather than make another test just simply for that. And then here we had a feature where, uh, you know, the form would be filled out if you want to it, so you could share a link, and it would fill out things like donation, donation amount and uh, giving frequency. And so I'm only really testing the first part in that, but I think that's okay because we're also testing uh, the donation, you know, workflow in this previous test. So you don't have to, like, go, go all the way to the end if you have another test that complements it, because then you're just duplicating it. And one of the, the biggest complaints when you get enough tests is it takes too long to run. And then here's uh, another example of a test. So here I'm, you can import data and then dynamically create tests, which is kind of interesting. Uh, and so you can use some of the data uh, here to write the name of the test even. Um, this is just an authentication test. But is this a good test uh, to be in Cypress? Uh, Probably not because you're not really testing anything with user interaction. You know, you can probably push this down uh, to a lower level, and this is, you know, using PHP unit 
uh, browser, test space. Um, and so you also get things like creating users and other stuff like that. You have to create sort of a bridge if you're using Cypress in the JavaScript. Um, so maybe another reason to use integration tests because uh, you get some of those uh, functions for free. And then, like I said, there's uh, tons, tons of plugins. So this is a link to the plugins page. Uh, you can, you know, go through it. There's like, I don't know how many. Uh, I'll just say 100. Because it sounds like a good. Uh, but there's many different categories, and I'll go uh, over some of them uh, a little bit later. And then, last slide on Cypress. So I'm not just going to tell you it's all puppies and rainbows. Uh, there are some downsides there. Uh, just want to be honest and fair and so still no iframe support so that's that links to uh, an iframe issue it's been open for a while <laughs> there's a lot of uh, comments people why don't you have this fixed yet and so like I said uh, there's even plugins for it and sometimes it works fine and I, I've had it work you know uh, many months years and then other times you'll test an iframe and you just, uh, you know, struggle with it because what Cypress does is it takes a DOM snapshot. And so what I've seen it do is uh, it'll go in there, it'll take an empty snapshot of the iframe, the iframe loads other things, and then you can actually see it in the test runner, the next, you know, like uh, tick or whatever, it has all the stuff there. And you know, it's frustrating because you can see it, it shows up, but uh, trying to get Cypress to wait for that or get the correct DOM snapshot uh, can be tricky. And then uh, this comes from a quality assurance Reddit, actually. So I kind of, you know, stepped into, uh, you know, it's a little bit outside of my zone, but um, they go into if you follow that link in a lot more detail. I still don't know what key, key cloaks are, but um, you know, Cypress isn't too great with iframes. Multiple tabs. If you have anything with multiple tabs, uh, you probably run into trouble. Multiple windows. Um, things like Selenium Server and the WebDriver API just have kind of better support for that. And then this can be a pro or a con. Um, it's limited to JavaScript and TypeScript. And so if you're doing like decoupled Drupal, you know, you can uh, actually do things like spy on the function so you can have a code coverage report, which is kind of nice. But if you're using other languages like PHP and you're, you're kind of trying to, you know, one foot in each language uh, can be less, less useful. Um, but if you're doing decoupled Drupal, yeah, that can be a pro. And then Playwright is something I, I want to look into more. It's a was started a fork of Puppeteer, uh, which came up in a previous slide. Um, and this uh, link will go to a, a post where someone explains in great detail why uh, they prefer Playwright over Cypress um, and the reasons. Uh, so, but they they weren't shy in, in uh, uh, their opinion on that. Um, so I definitely want to look look into Playwright and kind of compare it, and then also Nightwatch. Um, because I'm main, mainly looking to Cypress, and it's just been you know so easy for me to use. Uh, Test Runner, you know, knock on wood, has never failed for me, and that's just a, a blessing. So that's uh, kind of the end of that part, and now I will uh, go uh, show you some. Drag it over. Um, go into PHP Storm and show you some uh, actual tests. And then I'll open it up for uh, QA. Um, so I guess I guess I'll just go 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 into this. This is a uh, a plugin here. So what common plugins might you want to use? Um, this is actually test uh, a lighthouse. Uh, so you can you can work that in there if you have you know a kind of performance budget, um, and what this does is just uh, goes goes to the home page and then you have an object which you can set different thresholds uh, and you know if it goes uh, under any of those thresholds the test will fail, and so that's a good way to uh, keep uh, you know honest with your uh, performance. Uh, here's another plugin. Uh, it's uh, Cypress uh, X and uses X Core. Uh, so what this is doing is just going around and uh, try, goes to the home page again. You have to inject X and then you can check 
um, to see if it's accessible. And oftentimes you'll have, uh, you know, kind of, uh, these are rules that are in Acts. Uh, you can go there and look at that documentation, but sometimes, you know, you'll have things that are hard, hard to get accessibility-wise, but you have a escape hatch there uh, to include uh, excluded rules. And then, I won't really go into this, but this is on the um, Acts uh, core plugin page. And you'll want to do this probably if you use this plugin. And uh, I just copied it right from the docs. But what it does is when you're running the test, it'll output um, a very nice uh, little table of the violations. Otherwise, you have to like go into the test runner. Um, so that's a nice, nice addition that they added to that plugin. And then I often will with Drupal uh, put put things into a module. You can have config and you know adding uh, pages or users. You can do this many many different ways. But a lot of times I end up developing a, a testing module and do you know creating things when you install it. Um, some people use Drush commands. You can kind of pick and choose. And um, and then I'll, I'll try to show you the experimental studio, which is um, you know kind of a click click thing, a different thing than the Chrome extension. So they're, I guess they're working on mul multiple ways of doing it now. Um, but here you can set up configuration. Um, and these are just uh, ways that uh, make some of the plugins work. Uh, there's the authentication test. Oh yeah, I'm gonna, that's where I'll try to put the experimental studio output when I try to run that see if it actually works. And then, okay, th yeah, this, this I, <laughs> I was proud, proud of this. Uh, so um, when you uh, put the test up on your CLI pipeline, one of the uh, common, or the CI pipeline, one of the common things I've run into, you'll have a lot of tests, uh, you know, you wanna uh, group the tests, and maybe you only run, want to run certain tests on pull requests and then other tests when you merge everything in. Um, so I was trying to figure out how to do that on uh, GitHub Actions, and this is what I uh, came up with. So I'll just, just break it down. Uh, it took, took me a little while, and you know you can see the, the PR command is like 50 commits as I'm just trying to go through this. So what this does uh, is it goes through, it sets a uh, variable, just has tags false, so, and this is, uh, I guess I'm uh, looking for a commit message, so something special in the commit message um, to see then if it has tags and which tags there. Um, this will take the uh, most recent log uh, commit, and it's important to add the, uh, the no merges because the most recent commit on GitHub Actions is actually uh, the merge commit, and so you won't see any message there, which threw me for a loop for a while. It's like, why is there no message? And you also have to put fetch depth uh, zero so it gets more than the most recent uh, commit. And then it reads it into array. It looks for the hash signal. So this is if you have a get commit, commit message, whatever it says, and at the end there's a hash symbol. And so that's what it's breaking it down upon. And a sanity check, um, just making sure that there's something there. And then at the end, I'm uh, making sure there's an at tag and uh, that is in uh, here. You can uh, add tags at uh, several different levels. Uh, so you can tag uh, the describe block, uh, here's the content. And then I was also using a smoke tag. Uh, so sometimes you just have like, we really want to know if these tests work. And so that if it finds those uh, things with at symbols, it'll put them uh, into a string and then uh, does these, uh, set these variables, so it's true. And then uh, installing DDEV, you can probably set this up different with an image or something like that. Setting up a Drupal website. Um, here I'm installing the um, you know, uh, te testing module I was kind of showing before the install a page there. Uh, no dependencies and then here we get down to the actual um, environment uh, and so since I've up here um, put them in the GitHub environment uh, variable I can access them down here uh, with the same uh, keys 
And so I'm doing it, running different tests, uh, you know, if you really just want to speed it up and you're doing stuff with content or whatever, it'll just run those tests with the uh, commit message. And then if it doesn't have anything in there, it'll run the smoke test. Uh, so that's a, a decent way uh, to provide some things if you really want to get the test run uh, done. Because some, sometimes, you know, you can get up to like hours, uh, depending on how, how many tests you have. And another thing that can help is um, splitting it up. So this is actually uh, a pretty easy way of doing parallelization on GitHub Actions. Um, and this is what I would run uh, when, after it's merged in, you're running more tests, um, because you're not you know, re trying to review anything, so it's a good time to run all the tests, see if anything breaks. And so what this is doing is building a, uh, is adding containers, and so you can add as many as you want. Here it's just two. And then uh, same same lot of steps here, but then you have the um, uh, it's a plugin called Cypress Split, and what this does is help you parallelize it. And so all you have to do is use this GitHub action uh, and use the it's a straight job total, so that's like the that relates to the container. Um, and this will go through and then take how many however many tests you have, divide them. Uh, you know, so you have 50 tests, you have two containers of 25 each, and so let's say your original test run was like 40 minutes, then there should be 20 each, and you can, you know, keep going, and that's a nice way to, um, you know, cut down on your test run time, because if you add more tests, uh, you know, it'll just keep getting longer. Um, the last thing over here, here are just some of the, um, Plugins that I have, I don't don't have a lot. I was uh, trying to make this kind of an example uh, repository on my GitHub uh, profile and keep adding examples. Um, but there you see the um, you know X, uh, the Lighthouse audit we had. Uh, Cypress grep is what splits it up into um, tags, uh, which I showed. Uh, real events we talked about that, and then Cypress br split runs it in parallel. Um, and then Cypress Slowdown is actually one you can use for examples like I'm uh, going to try to show here, but it'll pop up a test runner. And it just uh, it slows down uh, so people are better able to see. Uh, better able to see it. So now I'll just uh, open the test runner and ho hopefully this pops up in the same window. Oh, no, it didn't. So I have to drag that over. And here's the test runner. Uh, they updated the, the UI, uh, so it looks better. Um, but here you have the different specs you can run. And I'll just show uh, content creation here. Uh, click on it. And here I've slowed it down because it would be like super fast. Uh, you can see it's creating the session because it hasn't yet. Um, otherwise it would be restored. Here it's just going through. Uh, you can nicely see what's, what's going on. Um, and once again, this is using the slowdown, so it's slower than it normally would be. Um, but if you're debugging, that can be useful. And this is the same same test we went over, and then uh, at the end, it's still little assertions, and then yay, now it's green. And so if it failed, it would be red X. Um, but you can go along, and then it's, you see a DOM snapshot of each of the stages. Uh, so if I wanted to see, you know, contains article, like why isn't it there? Uh, you have the snapshot and you can go spec the element and now when you go over to the console uh, it has it you know right there for you uh, if I go click again here it even has mouse events um, and there's the DOM node uh, but it's really nice there um, where was the yeah and then you can even see before and after so it's kind of hard to see but you know before we don't have it selected after there it shows up. So a lot of this stuff can be very useful if you're debugging tests. Um, and you know, it's just a lot harder for me to do a sauce lab as a remote uh, thing. Um, so that's uh, that. And then I'll go into authentication. Here's not slowing down, it's a lot faster. Uh, you can see this is just normal test run. And so let's say I wanted to add a command here. So for fun, I will just um, add a command to this test. 
Uh, so it reruns at first to go through all the steps, and now you see there's uh, additional prompts we have here. And so I can right click on that text, and they're still working on this, so it's, it's, it's very rough. Uh, but I can then assert that the text is there. And so now it has the steps. And so if I then save the command, it'll run through it again, uh, just to make sure it works. Hooray. And now we have an uh, authentication. This stuff. And so this is the last step that ran. And here it just gives you a comment. Uh, as you can see, you might, you know, get um, have to redo the selectors and whatnot. So I, you know, oftentimes will just like <coughs> go through a task, go through, and then you'll have to kind of like take it and massage it a lot. Um, but if you're new to testing and you just want to try Cypress out, it's a pretty uh, interesting way to uh, start your test and uh, look at that stuff. Um, so that's basically a bit on the test runner. Um, they do have a CI service they kind of try to push you in because um, <laughs> they got to make money some way. And so this will connect to your, the cloud and helps you run in parallel and a lot of things and then I guess you can debug the sessions remotely I don't that's like one of their newest features uh, you know I, I don't I don't pay for that stuff uh, and, you know so there there is even like a, somebody made like a, a Cypress dashboard that's like open source uh, you can download that um, and, and put it up on Heroku or whatever um, but yeah that's that's about about it um, so I guess I'll open it up for uh, Questions? If anybody has questions, no. You guys, uh, I can ask you questions. Uh, <laughs> sure. So that's a nice switch. Yeah, I guess I will. I will. I will stop the recording then for the people that will watch it later.